Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. So Mistral released CodeStral today, which is a code generation model, um, which I'm actually really excited about. So it's really good at code generation tasks like fill in the middle or code completion. It's trained on a programming language. It has an instruct version that supports tool use. But one of the reasons why I really like code generation models, and I've actually done quite a bit of work with them, is that they're just very generally useful. So lots of companies, for example, want co custom code assistance that might combine like some documentation plus code generation. Um, at Langchain, for example, we have something called Chat Langchain. It's basically QA over our docs. It can produce functioning code blocks uh, for users based on questions. Um, and one of the other things that's cool about code is really easy to evaluate. It's really easy to test. Does this code actually execute or not? Um, and so a really powerful idea related to code generation was put out a few months ago um, from the folks at Codium AI. And Karbathy summarizes it really nicely here in that this idea of flow engineering for code, en for code generation is really powerful. And the idea shown in the paper, the Alpha Codium work, and kind of highlighted here in this tweet from Karpathy, is simply that if you produce a code solution, you can really easily check it in line, kind of as mentioned here, it's pretty easy to evaluate code. At the minimum, does it execute to the imports work? Um, in the maximum case, do you have like a, an actual solution to the unit test? But in any case, the point is code is very easy to test. And you can actually test it in your inference flow. So you produce a generation, you then test the code. If it fails, you can loop back and try again. And this idea of kind of a, a code generation flow was shown in the paper to produce much better results. And it's something that I want to show today uh, using CodeStroll uh, in a really simple test case. So this is something I've done a little bit in the past, and I found it to be extremely effective. It's a very simple idea. But here's the basic flow that we will kind of highlight. So I want to be able to take a question related to code generation, pass it to the model, so pass it to CodeStroll, and have CodeStroll produce a solution. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a function calling or tool use with CodeStroll to produce an output object that has three things. A preamble stating like here is the problem that I'm trying to solve, the imports, and the code itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how it's really easy to incorporate some simple code checks like do the imports work, does the code execute. If either fail, like there's a bug in the code, then I'm going to show how to loop back and retry. And this simple kind of like check retry loop is a way to significantly improve the, the accuracy and, and kind of usability of code generation models. I'm going to show how to do that right now. So to kick this off, I have a notebook here. I've done a few pip installs. Uh, I've just set my Mistral API key. That's really it. And I'm also going to use Langsmith or Tracing. Of course, this is optional. I'm going to set environment variable for my Langchain project, uh, which will basically will indicate where all my traces will go. And this is just like the, the kind of flow we want to lay out. So we basically want to use CodeStroll to take a user question, produce a solution, and we want to test that solution. If it passes our test, return to the user. If it doesn't, try again. That's all we want to do. So what I'm going to do here is first, let me just show some very basic components. So first, let's just talk about how to actually use CodeStroll. Here's my general prompt. I basically just, I'm going to tell the model you're a code assistant ensure that all the code can be executed with all the imports and variables defined, structure your answer in three ways. Give me a preamble or a prefix describing the code solution, give me the imports, give me a function code block. So I'm gonna ask for those three things. Now here's where tool use comes in. I can actually define the schema of the output that I actually want. And what I can do is I can bind that using uh, Langchain's very convenient with structured output. I can basically bind that to the LLM and then this chain will invoke the LLM using the structured output. Now, here's how that actually works under the hood. Basically, this object that I pass as a pedantic object is converted into function schema form a straw, and it's then passed or bound to the LLM. So the LLM has access to this function, and it knows the schema that it should return when that function call or tool is invoked. So basically what happens is I can use user question, the function is invoked, and then the LLM knows to produce an output that adheres to my schema. And this will basically be a JSON string. Again, remember an LLM is just string to string. So it's going to be a JSON string. And then under the hood, with this with structured output thing that I'm using from Langchain, we apply a, an output parser that basically a pedantic parser take a JSON string, convert it back to a pedantic object. So that's it. That's all that's going on. Um, but I'll show you how this is really cool. So I'm defining this object. This is what I want to get out. 
Here's my chain. Now let's test this out. Write a function for Fibonacci. Um, I pass it in as a user question. Um, so that's it. Now this is running. Great. And we see a result. Now here's what's cool. If you look at this result object, it actually is a code object. So it, it basically is a pedantic object following the scheme we specify here. It has a prefix. Boom. It has some imports. It, actually, in this case, none. And then it has a code block. That's it. So we'll see why this is really useful in a little bit, but I just want to introduce that idea of basically we can use code scroll with tool use to produce structured outputs, which is generally very useful. And in particular for this notion of kind of like inline self-correction is extremely useful. Cool. So that's that first piece. Now, what I'm going to introduce here is LangGraph. So LangGraph is a library from the LangChain team. And we've used this in a number of other videos, um, and I've used this kind of extensively in general, uh, to build flows. And this is an example of a flow. The main characteristic of the flow that I highlight here that LangGraph is really well suited for is anything with a cycle. So anything with feedback. Basically, what it's saying is, I want, every time I run my app, I want to do this code generation, produce a structured output, do some kind of code checks, make a decision based upon the outcome of those code checks, feedback if they fail, finish if they pass. That you can think of as like a very simple kind of like workflow. Um, and LangGraph is a great way to build these kinds of workflows. And we'll see why. So the first thing I need to specify with LangGraph is just simply the graph state. Now this is just a thing that lives throughout the lifetime of my graph. It basically represents all information that's shared across what you might call these nodes. So in this case, I have two particular nodes and you might call this an edge. So this is kind of where I'm making a decision. Um, so state lives across these nodes and edges. So that's really it. So I'm going to define my state. It's going to contain some information that's relevant to the flow I just talked about. So it's going to contain an error message. It's going to contain my final generation. It's going to contain the messages that are being passed to my LLM. <clears throat> and this will all become a little bit more clear as we go forward. So here I'm going to lay out, this is basically the nodes and the edges of my graph. Now what you'll see is <clears throat> for every node, Here's my generate node, and that's what we laid out here, generate. Um, it's going to take in the state, and the nodes just modify the state in some way. So that's how to think about the nodes. So in this case, I take in the state. I unpack the state into, like, some messages, uh, some of our iterations, an error message. These are things we're going to use throughout our graph. Um, so then what I'm going to simply do is compute a code solution. So I'm going to look at my messages in, and I'm going to generate a solution. Now, remember, that's exactly what we did up here. So this is actually nothing new. Remember, look at this. This is just, we define a set of messages, invoke our code gen chain, get an output. Same thing we're going to be doing in our graph. So this is nothing exotic. We've actually already tested this. And <clears throat> once that runs, I'm just going to append that output of code solution to my messages, okay? So, you know, again, here's my attempt to solve the problem. I'm just going to take the codes, the prefix, the imports, and the code, I'm just going to add that as a new message. I'm going to increment my iterations. We'll use this iterations to determine when to stop. Um, and I'm just going to return then my state with a few things here. First is going to be my code solution, my generation. So that's it. Then it's going to be my, my stack of messages, which is basically just pended to. And then the number of iterations. That's really it. That's it. So nice and easy there. Now the code check is the second kind of big node that we're going to be working with. So our first node is generation. The second node is our code checks. So we just saw generation. Generation can return the, the generation with the three pieces, the preamble, the imports, and the code block. Now it's going to be passed to code check. <clears throat> so code check is really anything we want it to be. We could do any kind of checks on this code now. In the, maybe in the best case, we had some kind of unit test we could run. I'm going to show you the simplest possible code check that we might want to do. So in this particular, particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to get the code solution from our state. Remember, we wrote that out to state. So the generation contains our code solution. And in this node, I just pick it back up from state. You know, state's passed every node. I get the code solution. I extract the three pieces. And we just showed that above. So I get the prefix, the imports, and the code. And now all I'm going to do is simply just test execution. Do, does imports execute? If not, I'm going to throw a flag, or I'm going to kind of throw a, throw a message here, code import failed. I'm going to take an error message. I'm going to pen that error message to our messages object, and I'm going to return that. That's it. And alternatively, 
if that passes, I'm going to go ahead and try the whole thing. So I'm going to combine the imports and the code. Um, I'm going to go ahead and execute the, the code. And again, if that fails, I'm going to basically return another error message. Um, and now if there's no errors, then that's great. I confirm that you know there's no test failures. I set this error flag to no, and everything else is the same as before. I return the messages, I return iterations, I return code solution. That's it. Now, this is the final bit. All we're going to do here is decide whether or not to finish. This is basically our little conditional edge, which we talked about here. And all this needs to do, because we wrote that error flag to state, so again, remember we wrote error no if none of these tests passed. We wrote error yes if either one does, right there. And if that's the case, all we need to do then is get our the get our error from the state. Um, if it's no or we've exceeded the max iterations, uh, then we just go ahead and finish. Um, and if yes, then we go back to generate. That's it. And that's really it. So we're just going to find all of those pieces. And we're basically almost done here. Let's just build this graph. Now, this is how in LangGraph, you can actually assemble your workflow. All you need to do is take that function I define generate, add it as a node, take the function we define code check, add it as a node. Again, this is my, like, this is the state graph. Um, and I just build the graph here. Set my entry point as generate, um, add an edge. And then, uh, so basically, I go from generate to check code. And I go from check code to basically, I decide to finish based upon this logic right here. And basically, if, if it returns end, then I end. If it returns generate, I go back to generate, okay? Um, so that's really the crux of all you need to do. And I can go ahead and run that. And actually, this will draw my graph for me using this little display feature right here. So we can see we start, we go to generate, we go to code check. Optionally, depending on what happens from the code check, based on conditional edge, we'll go back to try to regenerate. Um, or if there's no errors, we go to end. So that's really it. It's pretty nice. Um, and the one thing I'll just make a note of is, as we're going through this flow, we're actually appending to our messages. And so basically, if, the, if there's an error, we're appending that failure to our messages. And we're basically telling the LLM, here is the failure, reflect on this error, um, state what you think went wrong, and try again. So that's really it. Nice and easy. And there's our flow. Cool. Now let's try this out. Here's like the simplest possible, um, you know, kind of problem. Write a Python program that prints hello world, right? So let's try this out. I'm gonna run this. And what's kind of nice is, I have this kind of this this uh, nice kind of formatting stuff. You can kind of see the input. Um, yeah, okay. So write a program that prints hello world, generating code solution, and then it, here's here's kind of my attempt to solve it. Um, here's actually the the imports, none, the code. Here's the code. It goes to the checks, no test failures, and it ends. Cool. Now what it's nice is I can go over to Langsmith, and I have this project right here. Now this project actually lays out exactly what we just did, but we can actually dig into each piece. So here we went, we start our graph, we went to generate. I go to, again, this is using code stroll model. So here's, here is my, uh, you know, human message or my question in. Um, this is showing that it does indeed invoke my function. So that's great. Um, here's the prefix, here's the imports, here's the code block. Um, it uses the pedantic tools parser to basically write that out as a pedantic object. We talked about that previously. Um, and then here's the code check. So basically it goes through the, the various code checks and you can kind of check all these here. Um, and then it goes through the decision to finish. Um, and in this particular case, because none of the code checks failed, it finished. So that's great. So this is a good example of like, of kind of how the flow works in a very simple test case. Now let's try something that's a little more sophisticated. Cool. So in this case, I'm basically asked to vectorize a function. I give it a function. Um, I show me, ask it to show me a test case with, the, with this actually working. Okay, so we can see that it kicks off the flow here. I want to vectorize a function. Um, here's an attempt to solve the problem. Uh, so here's kind of the initial solution. Now what we see here is your solution failed the code execution test. It did not define image. Reflect on the error, attempt to solve it. Here's my attempt to solve the problem. The error occurred because variable the, the variable image is not defined to solve this problem. So you, you make it kind of reflect on its error and try again. 
So it goes and tries again, but we see it fails again for a different reason. Your solution failed, the execution test, it could not broadcast um, uh, 50, 50, 50 in, into the shape 50, 50, 53. Okay. Um, so here's my, here's the attempt to solve the problem. It kind of explains itself. It goes back through and then it, all the code tests now pass. Um, so that's basically it. And then finish. So this showcases how you can use code generation using the code straw model straw with self-correction using LangGraph. And what we showed in, in general is the ability to, to perform code generation and perform arbitrary checks on the output of the generation itself. If any checks fail, loop them back, use a message queue to accumulate over time uh, or over iterations in this flow, the various errors, and then pass them back to the LM to attempt to self-correct. And we've seen, we've seen this work pretty effectively in a very simple test case, but I've actually seen this work really well in the case of uh, code generation with RAG, and uh, we have some other uh, resources on that, which I'll share later. Thanks.